Fast forward to the 80s. Following U.S. experiences with the M16A1 in Vietnam, the U.S. Marine Corps and the Department of Defense embarked on an upgrade program in 1979. The upgrades were extensive and included a new barrel twist rate for the updated M855 ammunition, a thickened barrel, new sights, brass deflector, a new circular handguard, a new pistol grip, and the biggest change of all, changing the full auto firing mode to three round burst. The resulting rifle was officially adopted by the US Armed Forces in 1983 as the M16A2, which saw action in all US conflicts of the late 80s and 90s, including the invasion of Panama, the Gulf War, Somalia, Yugoslav Wars, and onwards, as well as being extensively exported worldwide. Oh. Chicken wing? No chicken wing. Chicken wing? Sea clown. Mm, yeah. Private! What in Sam hell are you doing sir, here? Sir, I'm just training, sir. Sorry, sir. Doesn't look like it. But it doesn't matter. Today's your lucky day. The Pentagon has gifted you the new M16A2. Thank you, sir. Give me that. Oh, sorry, sir. Now learn it. Get good. Sorry, sir. Because you might be heading to Panama for just cause. Uh, are we gonna kill Kami, sir? No. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So get going. Train good, sir. Soft hands. Soft hands. Hi, I'm Andrew in a bit of a new setting over here. And in this week's very special video, we've jumped forward by over a decade from our last VFC M16 video to review the Cybergun M16A2 GBB by VFC, a rifle that in many ways forms the basis for most of the AR variants we see today. On first impressions, the first thing you notice on this fantastic M16A2 by VSC is its light weight for such a lengthy rifle. A bit heavier than the A1 due to several changes, but it still has its aluminium alloy receiver just like the real thing. Now the realism of the materials extends to now more solid polymer furniture too. In addition, this rifle is also jam-packed with authentic Colt markings and details being fully licensed by Cybergun. Now, over to the front, you have a now familiar NATO birdcage flash hider with a solid bottom half right over here. This was done on the real rifle to stop the muzzle blast venting downwards and kicking up dust, potentially revealing your location. It also has the bonus effect of reducing muzzle rise from the vented upper half, which forces gas up instead of down. Further back, we yet again have that manly 20 inch barrel, but this time the barrel is sporting a much thicker front end. Now historically, this was due to armors in the 70s incorrectly believing that the M16A1 barrels were getting bent due to barrel gauges getting stuck. However, the barrels were not bent and the gauges were instead getting caught on carbon residue inside the gas port. However, the real reason was discovered too late and the DoD had already ordered a million A2 barrels, so no backseas. And every US soldier from then on was forced to carry a heavier rifle for absolutely no reason at all. The front sight, front sling mount, and the bayonet mount are all standard, but just behind we have the more familiar circular handguard with the two halves now being identical instead of the left-right triangular guard of the A1. Now just like the real rifle, the handguard is now made of a much more robust polymer that can withstand a hefty amount of punishment. Unfortunately, the Cybergun M16A2's solid handguard means it also suffers from the same pop-up placement as its predecessor 
with the hop-up located in the base of the barrel, which means having to pry over the handguard oh. apart through the insanely <laughs> yes, stiff retention it. ring. The <laughs> yes. hop-up again, pretty stiff from our experience, but it is tactile, very accurate, so do take the time to adjust the hop before you start a game. Now over to the top, and it is the OG carry handle master race yet again, but now with easily adjustable rear aperture sights for both windage and elevation in two precision settings. The carry handle also features a hole in order to attach older sort of sights and attachments or genuine third-party rail adapters should you wish to go and add stuff on. Now onto the receiver itself, and you can immediately tell this is an A2 by the inclusion of the brass deflector. This allows the M16A2 and all subsequent ARs to be fired comfortably left-handed without the left-handed shooter's face getting peppered with hot brass. Moving down, you also have the familiar circular forward assist that's non-functional on this GBB, as well as the placement of the bolt and mag releases that we now know and love today. Now move down and we have the biggest change in the M16A2 in its fire controls, which come from safe, semi, and then three round bursts, as the DoD basically surmised that your average 18 year old draftee in Vietnam will spring far too much ammo into the jungle. The trigger itself is utterly gorgeous, as is typical with VFC guns, with a massive prominent hammer release that reverberates throughout the aluminium receiver and a very solid reset. Absolutely no complaints here. And now for the price, at 500 US dollars, the VFC M16A2 does sit at the higher end price range for GBB rifles, but is typical for full metal VFC guns, especially as the external quality continues to improve with each subsequent model. So the Cybergun M16A2 by VFC looks to be the iconic baseline for all the ARs we know and love today. But how does it shoot? Let's head outside to find out. And now for the chrono. As usual, we'll be firing 0.2 gram BBs using green gas. Death. And here we are yet again outside in an absolutely stiflingly hot day to go and test out this M16A2 by VFC. We've got Jim Bob set about 30 meters away from us and we'll be going in once again. Now, um, we do have a little bit of a crosswind today because we are outside, um, but I think it should be okay. Um, the M16A2 here is shooting pretty well, and from my observations, it should be just fine. But enough work, let's just get into it. So, all right, we start, let's do this. Nice. Really enjoyed shooting this. You know, it's got that really nice kick, similar to the VFC M16A1, but I know it just feels a little bit more chunkier. But overall, really, really impressed by the shooting action, the ring, you know, the trigger, especially. I mean, it's got that classic VFC AR trigger, really has a nice release and a proper reset as well. So. Overall, it just feels fantastic, especially the firing action. Accuracy too, from what I can see, is actually really good as well. You know, it shoots straight. We set the hop up just a little bit lower. We don't usually set the hop up to go up at the very end because that might affect the accuracy just a bit. So even though the hop up is a little bit lower than we would usually use in the skirmish, made the accuracy so much better. And I think the groupings are going to be pretty impressive. You know, especially when you've got this big, long 20 inch barrel, though I'm not sure whether the inner barrel actually reaches the end. So I have to go and take a look at that later. But overall, it is very nice, really impressed, really feels good. Ergonomically, I mean, it's now with the M16A2, you now have the ARs, you know, the standard ergonomics and the features that are featured in all modern ARs. So ergonomically, it's really no different 
than any of the M4s that modern style M4s you'd be using today, just with, you know, more, you know, less dated sort of plastic hand guards and all that. And this big solid stock. The stock is going to be a bit of an issue for smaller frame people. I'm, I'm a tall, lanky dude, so it actually fits me just fine. But if you're a bit smaller in stature or like shorter arms and stuff like that, this might force you to sort of extend yourself just a bit too much. So that's one thing to keep in note. The sides though, very impressive and easily zeroable. So, you know, elevation, elevation windage over here, that's fine. You have two selected sites as well. The peep site is what I use. And the peep site is actually what's getting me these fantastic shots. So I'm really impressed at that. And you can easily, just before a game, zero in and then get skirmishing right away. If you don't fancy iron sights, well, you always got this uh, additional optic, uh, this additional attachment hole right over here to go and screw in those sort of like more retro 80s to 90s, like pre Picatinny optics. Or you can just go and find a third party Picatinny rail adapter, pop it on, and you'll be fine as well. So, overall, yeah, I really do like it. Um, obviously, the main drawback huge long barrel, which makes it front heavy. And also the barrel's thicker, which makes it even more front heavy. So your left arm, if you shoot, if you're right-handed, is going to have to take a bit more strain on that. You know, it's not as easy to see clamp for something of a rifle of this length. So my advice would just be to keep it weaver and just keep it simple and remain as comfortable as possible. Overall, very impressed. Let's go and see how well I did. All right, let's take a look. Ah, here we are. Right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ah, this flyer over here, ten. So I'll just pop this over here. Right, so as you may notice, quite decent. Uh, this one. This flyer likely caused by a gust of wind that was round about the third shot in. Um, but overall, as you can see, spent a bit of time to go and zero this properly this earlier on. So the results speak for themselves. For GBB, this is actually pretty impressive. Dead on target with irons as well. So overall, very impressed. But then again, this is a VFC. And, you know, frankly, let's be honest, VFC has been kicking it out of the park in recent years so none of this should really be surprising especially because it's on such a proven platform at its very very core i mean this is the m16a2 is the platform that all other ars are based on so this sort of performance and this sort of quality craftsmanship from bsc should not be you know it's pretty much expected to be honest overall i'm very impressed um obviously Accuracy and performance aside, we gotta remember that the crux of the M16A2 that makes it so different from its previous, from its previous version, the M16A1, is its three-round burst. So why don't we just go and take a look? You set up to three rounds, and uh, let's put one over there. Oh, just one round because I've actually fired another round before it, so it's now reset. But now. Boom, there we go. Now, I'm not technical enough to know whether the, the cam system that defines the M VFC M16A2 three round burst is identical to the real one, um, but it does bear some aspects of the real one where sometimes if you were on semi and you fired a certain amount, once you set to three round burst, it completes the burst so if you fired one shot, it would fire two, or you fired two shots, it would fire one before resetting to the three round burst. And that's one thing I've personally noticed. In fact, you just saw it right now. So that is quite impressive, even though from a gameplay standpoint, if you did want to fire a three round burst, you only fired one, it might be you know, less than satisfying at the moment. So do keep that in mind. Overall, I am very impressed. However, to go and like, venture more on this subject of how the M16A2 differs from the M16A1, I'll have this come over here Hello. with his own personal 
EM16, what was it? XM16 <laughs> E1 um, that he showed off last time. So we could go and tell off the differences between, you know, the experimental version of the M16 and this M16 A2. So, Nis, hit it off for us. What's First the differences? All, I'm sorry that like the gun is a bit more beat up from the last time because I actually feel my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go from let's go from the the muzzle to the butt basically. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that the XM has like a free prong, free prong uh, flash hider, while the M16A2 has switched to the uh, birdcage style flash hider. Now, because this, th these are both VFC products, so actually you can unscrew these and it'll reveal a 14 millimeter CCW thread. So if mm. you want to put on some other tracer, you know, whatever, I know it's a bit uh, ahistorical, <laughs> yeah, but uh, you can do so. Now, uh, the other difference between the two barrel profiles, as you can see, the XM has a more thinner, uh, what they call a pencil type style outer barrel setup, while the M16A2 has a more heavy, heavier barrel, more thicker uh, for supposedly for more sustained fire in the real steel world, but it doesn't really apply on airsoft. But uh, because of that, the M16A2 is a little bit more heavier than the older M16A1s because of the barrel profile. Now, moving on from there, obviously the big difference is the handguard. Uh, no longer do the M16A2 has a triangular style handguard, and they have went for a more modern circular handguard that we all know and love today. After that, let's go to the receiver. Now, the receiver, uh, first of all, the carry handle, uh, the iconic part of the M16, is slightly different between the XM or the M16A1 and the A2. So uh, the difference being the, the rear sights. So there's a way more adjustable rear sight setup on the A2. Mm -hmm. You can adjust this for windage, elevation, while the A1 variant, you can only do so much with it. Uh, and the, the, the other difference being that the uh, brass deflector is present on the A2, while it is not present on the older variants. So if you're a left-hand shooter for the real steel, is more ideal to have the brass deflector, otherwise you'll be eating spent casings. Again, this is airsoft, that doesn't happen, but it's a very nice touch that VFC actually included this. Now, other than that, there is a difference between the Ford Assist. Uh, the M16A1 and the XM16A1s, uh, E1, sorry, has a more classic style, uh, teardrop style uh, Ford Assist, while the M16A2 is the more circular, the one a more modern one you'll find on M4s and whatnot. Now, the final difference on the receiver is obviously the markings. The M16A2 has a burst over here and also gives you the markings on the uh, right-hand side of the gun while the XM doesn't have that. And uh, other than that, obviously, the markings are different. These are the two different rifles. And uh, the magazine. So the A2 now has a more standard Stanag 30-round magazine, while the older one only has a 20-rounder. Now. The magazine, although they're different in capacity, they are cross compatible uh, because they all run on the BFC V3 gas system. Now, the final bit, the difference between the A1 and the A2 is the sock. So other than the, the texturing on the, on the polymer is more different because uh, the A2 has now a nicer polymer to it. Uh, also, you can also notice that only the XM16 E1 has a rubberized butt pad, while the A1 and the A2 over here has a hatch for you to stick your Cleaning accessories. That's the difference. Oh, the I forgot to mention the pistol grip. Uh, the A1 and the A2. You, you have the little nub over here for your for your finger to rest on. Well, the older one doesn't have that. All right. Well, yeah. thank you very much. So you see, there's a lot of differences and there's a lot of detail that was put into it. So we are actually quite impressed with it. And mostly, it seems from our research, pretty accurate. So overall, like, honestly, like, I can't really say that it's a surprise because it's not. So yeah, it is actually fantastic. It performs well, shoots well, and is made very nicely. So we really do like it. I really like the attention and details that we have put into yeah, definitely. Their, their products. Yeah, so, all of them are pretty good. Yeah, so that being said, let's head back to the studio. Oh. And we're back. So it's pretty clear that the Cybergun M16 A2 by VFC is a fantastic piece of kit and it's going to be the ultimate gun for anyone who wants to get back into the woodland camo of the 80s and 90s. Now externally, you basically don't have a more accurate commercially available replica of the M16A2 on the market than this one with its aluminium receiver, period correct, 
plastic furniture and authentic markings. Performance is also excellent, with the rifle being accurate, hard hitting, as well as frankly being a joy to shoot as you saw out there. Overall, we give this outstanding gun 5 out of 5 stars. It's basically got everything you want in an M16A2 GBB. So let's hand it over to you guys. What are your thoughts on the Cybergun M16A2 by VFC? Let us know in the comment section below. And for these cool products and many more, visit us at www.redwolfairsoft.com. Zandrew, out.